Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video, The Illuminated Dragon. When an artist friend suggested I might enjoy watercolor paints made from real jewel pigments, it made me think of the illuminated manuscripts made by hand painting in medieval times. A dragon done in this style was my next thought, and I hope you'll enjoy seeing it painted. Please give it a thumbs up if you do, and now let's paint. I'm starting out the illuminated dragon. I'm using some very special paints that a friend of mine told me to check out. Daniel Smith's watercolor Pronotex that included semi-precious gems ground up for pigment, including amethyst. I was hooked. All I could think about was doing an illuminated dragon in the style of illuminated manuscripts. So I drew a very stylized dragon and I tried to include him in a format where the monks and the people who drew these illuminated manuscripts would put them into a large character at the top of the page that they handstakingly created in the books that they were copying out. I've started using one of Daniel Smith's colors called Mayan Blue Genuine and Jadeite Genuine to color in the dragon with a basic green color. If you could look closely at these pigments, they have a lovely glisten to them. Using a product made from ground gemstones it was sort of exciting and fun. And it was a challenge figuring out how to use them. I found the colors to be lovely, but on the other hand, they handled in a very thin manner sometimes and needed to have more paint layers added than a normal pigment would use. I'm approaching this largely with outlining and then I come back in and fill in in between where I've outlined. I'm adding a lot of small details. I'm trying to take my time to make it look really professional and cool. I'm making lots of little scales, lots of little claws, tiny details, because I figured the more details I made, the more it would look like it was really painstakingly done by a person of antiquity. I also had a book that used all different symbols and showed what they meant in Celtic art. So I took some of the symbols that I included in my painting out of that book. I used the drawing style and the formatting. The, actually, the reason I chose an orange lily at the bottom right-hand corner was because it was a complementary color for the dragon's color of that turquoise green color. The other reason I chose an orange lily was because there was one growing right outside my door in my garden. And I actually could pick it, bring it inside, and copy it right from the actual living flower.
Moving along, I began working on the dragon's wings again. Here, I'm using the color I was very excited about, called Amethyst Genuine. And the exciting part to me was that it was actually made of the gems. The color was very pretty. I found I had to use a lot of paint but I really enjoyed the quality of the paint. At this point, I also began mixing in other colors from my palette, not just using the Daniel Smith paints. I had picked these paints up at a craft store and they were on sale and uh, I really get a lot of use out of them as well. They're all iridescent or sparkly, semi-opaque palette, dry palette paints and they mix up nicely with water. It was that iridescent quality that I wanted to continue to use since the beautiful amethyst was so iridescent as well as the other colors in the dragon. I used a lot of that gold on the dragon for detailing. And I liked how the colors began to work together on the dragon's body and wings. That's a test piece of paper so I could check out my colors as well as my ink pens and see what, what's working right. I'm sure many artists have a piece of test paper nearby. I've gone in to make more details on the dragon's body. And I'm using the gold to detail the lily. I've made a stylized letter D. D for dragon in the top corner, trying to emulate the style of the illuminated manuscripts. And now I'm beginning to figure out exactly how I want to color this in and decorate it. I've looked up some old symbols from my Celtic artwork book and I'm copying some of them onto my painting. And continuing to detail the dragon. That dragon was so detailed. and highly stylized. And back to the letter D for dragon. It's coming along and being developed. I'm bringing in the gold to tie it together with the dragon and with the lily.
If this paint is used thick, it can be almost completely covering. Thinned out, it just adds a light glaze of metallic. Now I begin with a very fine line black ink pen. The manuscripts were frequently outlined. So to try to be authentic, I felt that I could get away with outlining also. I also liked the look of antiquity it gave it. and it pulled together the different colors. It also allows me to do some detailing with drawing. I'm fi trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do the borders. These beautiful illuminated pages always had borders around them of some kind. And I don't want to mess it up at this point because I've got a lot of time into this. So I have two side borders. I've got a line across the top and now I'm doing a line across the bottom. Exactly what I'm going to do within these spaces, I'm not sure yet. So I will be looking again at my illumination or at my Celtic art book to get some ideas. First, I'm going to outline all the little tiny details on the dragon. And that's going to take a while, but it's sort of fun. Before I finish the outlining, it occurred to me that if I want this to look a little bit antique, I should yellow the paper. So that is what I'm doing. I mixed up some sepia and some yellow ochre with a lot of water. And I'm painting it thinly on around the dragon and the lily and the letter D to try to make the paper look a little bit more like parchment or something old. This should have been done before I started painting or using any kind of uh, ink pen. But I didn't think about it until later. but I do think it looks better than just the plain white. I went back in to make it a little bit irregular so it wasn't all perfectly evenly done. And then came back in with some Rhodonite Genuine Paint to enhance my previous layer of color, or glaze it. I'm trying to decide what color to paint the border. I'm trying out some different ideas.
trying very hard not to mess up with my ink at this point. But it looks like I decided on using the Pimatite Genuine color. And I do think that works the best out of the Daniel Smith uh, color selection. Again, these are called Primatech Set. Watercolor Primatech Set. So I'm trying to paint each of the borders in very, very, very neatly. And not look sloppy. This is not freeform stuff. This is borders. In the illuminated manuscript style, yet. I'm sure that those people could not afford to be sloppy. Especially since they were using Precious metals such as gold, gemstones, and even the price of any kind of paper or the availability of any kind of paper, whether it was animal skins or whatever it may have been, would have required a lot of care. You did not want to waste things that weren't available easily. So it looks like I used the Mayan Blue Genuine for the top and bottom colors. And I've left a little square place in each corner to make an additional ornament there. Now I'm beginning to put patterns into the borders. And right now I'm just putting in a little random mark line. Painting in the corner squares. And adding a little fleur, fleur de rose. I'm not sure of the term, but adding additional ornamentation, such as what I had saw, seen in my Celtic art book, looking at manuscripts. And a bit of additional color. I've brought my orange tiger lily into the picture just because it was so pretty and I wanted to see how to copy and outline the painted tiger lily. I like how the color plays off my painting so I'm making sure to include some more of the orange in my painting. And back to my metallic gold and I'm going to gild the lily just a little bit more a 
Not every day you get to use that expression, literally. Now I'm taking the gold into the border and using it to make a regular pattern. Repeating at the top. These intricate little details that I observed on the ancient manuscripts were just so absolutely lovely. They made me inspired to try some of my own little details. And that was putting some weight on it because the page wanted to curl. And now I'm adding the little tiny border details again on all the sides and you can sort of see how that light colored metallic paint is showing up on my darker colored borders back with my ink and my pen continuing to outline details there was a lot, and I took my time, as the more I built, the more intricate it came, it became, and the more I liked it. Detailing all of the borders with the ink at this point. And I'm going back in to enhance my design with some paint. Also to darken some areas that dried a little bit too pale. I've come and taken the paper and put it onto a black piece of background so it would stand out and show me what else was needed in my painting. I had the idea to make a sphere in the corner and I wasn't sure of the size so I got a penny, I got a dime, I got a quarter, different sizes till I could see what looked right to me. And all of this was inspired by looking at the manuscripts, the illuminated manuscripts that I searched for. If I saw something that looked good and it would work for my painting, then I would add it. And the medallion in the corner is one of those ideas. You can also see how much better the white paper in the background and the border show up against the black than they were doing against my white or my pine colored table. And what to put inside the medallion? Again, I looked at some illuminated manuscripts from the past to see what might work. I'm 
I come back and begin doing more outlining to complete the intricate little details of the dragon. I remember I told you there was a lot of tiny details and I was working on them for many hours. But it was fun. I love dragons. Finishing detailing the medallion. And adding more details on the letter D. Toward the end, I brought in a thicker marker to try to do some detailing a little bit thicker than others. And I continued using my marker pens until everything was done to my satisfaction and it looked like the page was filled just the way it should be for an illuminated Dragon Manuscript. Overall, I really did enjoy using the Daniel Smith Primatix set, especially the Amethyst. texturing a little bit more of the background, doing some erasing as well to clean it all up, evaluating side to side to see if it looks completely done. And some last minute detailing and color added. I decided to speckle some spatter into the background just to add to the antiquity of the whole thing. A little tiny signature and I'm done. I hope you enjoyed my video, The Illuminated Dragon. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you click on Show More, you'll see additional links to some of the products I use, including the Daniel Smith Primatech watercolor set and the pearlescent watercolor set you saw me using in this video for all the gold paint. Also to my Facebook art page, my art blog, and my art products. Your comments are welcome. See you next video.